Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Ajay and today's topic is the types of computers. So this particular topic is for the 9th grade students of CPSC. So I'm taking this topic for them. So anybody else who wants to know the types of computers are most welcome. They can go through this tutorial. So computers are basically, we are going to understand the types of computers and we are going to categorize that in form of the purpose wise, okay, and the data wise and the size wise. Okay, so we are going to understand the purpose wise, as you can see over here, then the data wise and then the size and the functionality of the computer. So these are the first, the subcategories you can say. So if we talk about the purpose wise computers, okay, so the first thing that comes is the general purpose computers. So we'll go to the general purpose computers. So a general purpose computer can be a desktop and it can be a laptop, it can be a tablet, it can be your mobile, the smartphones basically. So these are all computers, all forms of computers and they are considered as general purpose computers. So if we talk about your desktop, it, it's a, like a personal computer and it remains at one place and basically we don't have a battery for it, right? But it is not meant for that basically. It is only meant to be at one place and you have to work from that particular place. We cannot move this from one place to the another. But at the other hand, then there are laptops, which is like a chargeable batteries there. And we can, uh, you know, move with the laptop anywhere we want and we can work onto it. And then there are other forms of uh, computers also, like the tablet is there, the smartphone is also there. So all these are kind of computers, a general purpose computer. Now the word general purpose is used because these are meant for your general work. So for example, a person working in an office is, uh, you know preparing a presentation so he is working on a presentation and he is using a presentation software isn't it another person is working on uh, is a graphic designer and he is uh, designing something so he's going to use the graphic designing software so he can install that software and he can use it so this is actually meant for general purpose computer means there are multiple things we can achieve from such a computer okay where there are multiple softwares installed and we can work on those software. Every particular software is meant for a particular task. So they have multiple tasks that we can achieve with general purpose computers. Then there are like, you can use social networking websites, we can access a website, and um, there are so many other things we can do with a general purpose computer. We can also play a video game, isn't it? So it is basically meant for general work. Okay, so it is considered or categorized as general purpose computer okay so the word general understand it so that's the general purpose computer next we are going to move with the special purpose now what are special purpose computers special purpose computers are basically special uh, specially designed for a particular task okay and uh, most of the time they will be only working on that particular task and uh, they are kind of dedicated computers so such kind of computers normally you're going to find in a hospital and also an, another example is an atm machine the atm machine you can find a computer over there also but it only but it is only meant for the ATM work, for the ATM transactions. You can do, you can check your balance, you can withdraw the money. So that that particular computer is only dedicated for that particular task. So that's the general uh, purpose that I spoke before and this is a special purpose computer, which is only meant for special work. Another example is like your washing machine. That is a fully automatic washing machine that I'm talking about. So you, you just have to set the program and according to the program that you have set, the washing machine will take the water, it will spin, it will dry, it will do all the work, isn't it? So there is a special computer embedded into your uh, washing machine, understand it, okay? So that is also an example of a special purpose computer okay so two categories we have taken general purpose and special purpose so that is the thing for the purpose wise computer now let's move to the data wise computer now these are like considered uh, to be working with data okay so first is the analog that we are going to look at so analog analog computers analog computers work with analog signal 
if you can see over here this kind of signals is called as analog signal basically any kind of electrical wire basically the electric electricity passes through it right so that's kind of an analog signal you can say okay so analog signal is not very accurate as far as the def definition is concerned an analog computer is a type of computer that uses continuously uh, changeable aspects of physical phenomena such as electrical me me mechanical or hydraulic quantities to model the problem being solved so such kind of computers are actually meant to interact with the surrounding with the environment if it wants to check whether the uh, the weather conditions or anything that interacts with uh, the the environment or you can say with the with the bodies the human bodies or any forms of bodies it can interact so if you want to know the pulse of a person so over there also kind of analog computer works so analog computers also you can find it mostly into a hospital in fact in a hospital the kind of computers we have are the hybrid one we are going to talk about that okay so this particular computer is a kind of a computer which works on a analog signal and that's the kind of signal okay such kind of signal is called as analog signal okay so basically it it is used to interact with the environment okay just to see whether what is what changes are taking taking place in your surrounding or what is happening in the uh, the movements or uh, anything that has to be checked in your body okay so that's analog computer the next we are going to move is a digital computer so basically a general purpose computer that we are, uh, that we spoke about is normally a digital computer so any computer that is your your desktop your laptop that normally we are using all those computers are digital computer and a digital computer basically has such signals where there is a zero and one so zero represents on and one represents off so a digital computer is a computer which works on digital signal one represents on and zero represent off a digital signal or digital data are very accurate understand it okay so the kind of computers that we are using in today's time all those computers the general purpose computers normally comes under the digital computer basically we are in the digital era and the uh, gadgets anything that we're using right now are the digital computers okay so that's the digital computers and then we have the third that is the hybrid hybrid means the combination of analog and digital so hybrid computers are computers that exhibit features of analog computers and digital computers both the digital components normally serves as the controller and provides logical and numerical operations while the analog components often serves as a solver of differential equations and other mathematical complex equations in simple language normally such computers the hybrid computers you find it into a uh, in a hospital where they need to check uh, the heartbeat of a patient at the same time they need some accurate data also so a combination of analog and digital data both are working together such kind of computers are called as hybrid hybrid means the both the features so analog as well as digital that forms a hybrid okay so you can write in your own words simple language you can anybody ask you you can give your answer in your own words so that's the hybrid computer and then now that's the data wise that we have gone through and then the size and functionality now this is really important now different sizes of computers we have okay one by one we will go through that first comes the desktop the desktop computers we have already discussed this is a desktop computer and it always remains at a single location we cannot move this from one place to the another and this is a digital computer understand it now all the computers that we're going to talk or uh, are the digital computers so a desktop computers is a personal computer designed for a regular use at a single location or near a desk or table due to its size and power requirement it requires a power it doesn't have a battery inside it isn't it and it is made for a single user understand it so the kind of desktops that we are using those are desktop computers so simple then comes the laptop i guess even this is very much clear to you a laptop often called as notebook is a small portable personal computer with a clamshell this i have discussed before also the second point is we can easily carry it anywhere we want it also has a battery to give us the power supply by which we can work on it for hours 
So that's the laptop computer, even that's a digital machine, understand it. And then tablets, I guess tablets, even you are aware of tablets. So a tablet is basically a combination of a laptop and a smartphone. A tablet computer commonly shortened as tablet is a mobile device typically with a mobile operating system and a touchscreen display processing circuitry and a rechargeable battery and it is thin and flat package isn't it so we can, we can also do some calling because it has a smartphone features also so it is a kind of a combination of a laptop and a smartphone but it's not a fully a laptop and neither it is fully a uh, smartphone understand it it comes between them so if you want the functionality of a laptop as well as of a smartphone you can always go for a tablet which is also a digital machine then comes smartphone i don't think anybody re really requires an introduction to this smartphone everybody is aware that today's smartphone is also a computer and there are so many functions available into a smartphone smartphones are a class of mobile phones of a multi-purpose mobile computing devices they are distinguished from feature phones by the stronger hardware capabilities and extensive mobile operating system which facilitate wider software internet you can do so much of internet browsing onto you uh, onto it you can download any apps any kind of software that you want there is a camera there is a gaming capability and uh, so many other features are coming up right and there is a touch screen and there are so many other things you can do with a smartphone and as well as you can do your voice call and text messaging also there are so many apps available you can download any app for your work and you can work on to it so this particular machine doesn't really require any kind of introduction you can write uh, in your own words about it okay so that's the smart phone for you then comes which is very important that is a workstation now workstation is also kind of a desktop computer okay first thing but it is a kind of more powerful than a desktop computer a bit more powerful why because such computers are actually placed as are actually acting like a server for a for a lan network that is a local area network so if there is a small local area network such computers are kind of made like a server now the word workstation do not get confused when we talk about client server architecture i'm talking about the architecture workstations are different and servers are different but over here i'm only talking about a small network uh, the word workstation over here means a computer which is a bit more powerful than a desktop and which has some networking capability okay so workstation is a special computer designed for technical or scientific applications you can say intended to you to be used by one person at a time okay and they are commonly connected to a local area network and run multi user operating system so workstation it is a bit more powerful computer than your desktop computer a normal desktop computer cannot work as a server or it cannot be uh, you know cannot uh, get connected to the other pcs and can work with the same capability as a workstation understand it okay so that's the workstation for you and then we have the mini computers now the word mini computers nobody uses this word it simply means the server computers understand one thing mini computers means the server computer server computer means it is like very powerful computer which can easily act as a server for multi uh, uh, for other workstation for other computers so if there are some around 100 or 200 computers the server can work as one particular powerful computer for all those machines but it has its own limitation limitation and it is only meant for mid-size organization okay if there is a, some organization where there are some around 100 computers 150 or 200 such kind of organizations will be called as mid-size organization so such computers which is cost effective for them they can use these servers for serving as a server for other computers to form a network understand it so a mini computer is a type of computer that possesses, possesses most of the features and capabilities of a large computer but is smaller in physical size mini computers are mainly used as small or mid-range server so they are also called as mid-range server operating business and scientific application mini computers may also be called as mid-range computer understand it okay so that is about the mini computers and then comes very important is the mainframe 
Now, mainframe computers, they are like huge, okay? And they have a huge uh, processing capability. They can uh, process huge request. So normally in today's time of mainframe computers, normal people will never buy this. This is only uh, uh, held by multinational companies where they have to process huge data, okay? And normally hosting companies where they website are hosted, all your website, if you have a website, it has been hosted onto a mainframe computer and a mainframe computer always acts works on a client server architecture so if you are kind of accessing any website for example any website you access so it is kind of a request sent to the computer and which computer is that is that it's a mainframe computer because you are you're not the only person who is accessing or you are accessing a particular website for example facebook if you're accessing facebook you're not the only person who is accessing facebook there are multiple people, there are millions of people who are accessing Facebook. So for such requests, now there are multiple and millions of requests comes to the computer, right? So obviously Facebook, they have like uh, multiple servers. That's a different thing, but a server can process multiple requests. Such kind of computers are called as mainframe computers, okay? So they can process huge uh, and bulk data processing can also be done, understand it. So it's very huge. Okay, so this is about the mainframe computers. And at the last, we have the supercomputer. Everybody has heard this word supercomputer. Uh, supercomputer is a computer that performs, I've given the same picture out here, but uh, that's about the mainframe computers by mistake. But supercomputer are actually, um, it works for the highest operational rate of our computers. Traditionally, supercomputers has, uh, have been used for scientific and engineering applications. So basically, you know, in space, for space research and all, we require supercomputers for just working super fast, right? It is very expensive and some of the Indian supercomputers that are developed are Aditya, which is developed by the Indian Institute of Tropical Metro Meteorology, that is uh, Pune and Anupam developed by Bhava Automatic Research Center, that is BARC, and Param U2 developed by Center for Development of Advanced Computing, that is by CIDAC, that is Saga developed by Indian Search, uh, sorry, Indian Space Re Research Organization, you are aware of this, that's the Is uh, ISRO, right? So all these computers, are basically a supercomputer is used by scientific reasons, and uh, for into space research and anything that is um, into into engineering part okay so for that reasons we use a super computer okay so that's about the types of computers uh, and i hope you have now understood the types of computers and it will surely help you a lot okay that's it for today bye for now